Oh, you talk big, Max. Let's see you got guts enough to draw on a white man. Obrigas. Jimmy Mexican. He's dead. Give me your gun. You ain't seem to got the straight of it. I had to shoot him. Nothing personal, Hat. Let's have the gun. What, for shooting a Mexican? For shooting a man. Without this, you couldn't whip anyone. Santiago, get Kuroga's body out. Strange are the ways of love Strange are the ways of This is It has to be, Your Honor. San Bart is the only town in this part of California with both the church and the jail. Nice, quiet little place. The man leaning against post over there is one in Fort Omaha. Name's Lee Hearn. You certain of that, Marshal? Never forget a face, Judge. That's Hearn. Why don't you arrest him then? If you expect me to arrest every wanted man we see, you'll have to build me a catch pen as big as California. A lot of them out here. Great many times I don't understand you. When it started, senores, uh, how do you do? Are you the big judge? I'm not exactly gigantic, young man, but I am a judge. Miller is the name. I didn't mean it that way, sir. Well, out here, a uh, sure enough United States judge is something real big. I'm Jim Ellison. They call me the sheriff. I'm the one that sent for you. You're called the sheriff. Are you the sheriff? Well, in a way of speaking, I am. 
You see, Don Roberto couldn't handle the Epps couples around here, so he made me sheriff. You have no authority from the United States territorial government? Oh, no, sir. They never heard of me. Then who is holding the accused? Where is the prisoner? Oh, I've got him, sir. Right inside. Have I completely departed from a world of reason? Who's this Don Roberto? Roberto de la Madrid. He owns just about everything around here. And runs the local politics? He runs just about everything. Might I ask who you are? Ben Stroud, Deputy U.S. Marshal. I see you don't wear a badge or a gun. I never had a badge. I'd probably get killed the first time I put on a gun. Some of the boys are real fast with a pistol. Then how in the name of hope and glory do you keep order? And arrest killers? Oh, I have to thump a skull once in a while. It is obviously high time some properly constituted authority took over here, Marshal. I never been one to go over a local peace officer's head, if it wasn't necessary. You figure you need help, Sheriff? No, sir. I can handle things. I guess we'll have to go along with that, Your Honor. I suppose I will have a courtroom. Oh, yes, sir. We're fixing it up right now. Come with me. I'll show you where it is. Those are uh, green hides, sir. They do smell a little. A little? I'm expected to conduct a dignified murder trial here. Where are my chambers? Chambers? Oh, that's what you judges call your office. Yes, my office. Oh. Maybe you can use the Major Domo's office. Momento, Senor Jim. Momento, por favor. Pero esa oficina está muy sucia. Y además. No está en condiciones para que la use el señor juez. Necesitamos una semana para limpiarla. And who is this? Oh, this is Santiago, my deputy. He thinks the office is too dirty, but don't worry, we'll get it cleaned up. This is Judge Isham, Santiago. I'm very, very honored, Su Excelencia. I'm quite certain that you have the most unique law enforcement organization in existence. <laughs> Carlos. Senorita. I wish you to meet my Yankee friends. You are drunk. Go back to the hacienda at once. I do not wish to meet your Yankee friends. You put him on his horse. Put him on his horse, Mario. father appointed you to keep his vaqueros from getting drunk in that filthy cantina. Your father appointed me to keep order in San Bart. His vaqueros are free Americans now. I can't stop their drinking. So that's what Yankee freedom is. Freedom to get drunk. That's part of it, Ellie. Would you like to meet the American judge? He just arrived for the trial. I've had enough Americanos for one day. Who is that young woman? Elena de la Madrid, Don Roberto's daughter. I was under the impression that this is now United States soil. Oh, I thought so too, sir. 
Since when does an American officer go to Gracias a los muchachos y que toquen algo bailable. Está muy bien, señor. Muchachos, el patrón thanks you. He would like you to play some dance music. Fellas, to be here at eight in the morning, we'll see you then. Thank you. Well, that gives us eight. We're going to have to hunt up four more. But, Senor Marshall, for why you need four more when eight and two makes twelve? We need two extra, just in case. Senor Jim, Santiago, he loves to dance. He won't get away. Nothing doing, with Santiago. Let's get out and see who else is coming to town. Marshal Stroud, this is Charlie Higgins. Howdy, Marshal. 
Howdy, Charlie. We're a few names short on our jury list. How about putting you down for duty tomorrow? Oh, no. No, sir. Any jury that vote against that man wouldn't live to get out of the courtroom. No, thanks. You were a captain's clerk in the Navy, weren't you, Charlie? That's right, Jim. Then you had something to do with keeping records. Yeah. How about putting you down for a court clerk just to keep track of what goes on? Well, yeah, I can do that. Charlie Higgins. We're holding court in a hide shed. See you in the morning. All right, Marshal. Thanks, Charlie. You bet, Jim. Brother? Sir? I didn't get a chance to wish you a happy birthday today. Jim, this is Don Andres Estudillo and his family from San Diego. Senor? Andres, this is Sheriff Jim Ellison. Jim, are you not going to ask me to dance? Do I have your permission, sir? Well, since it is your birthday, yes. Isn't he very young to be a sheriff? Yes, he is young, but he is doing a man's job. He made San Bartolo a peaceful place until Quiroga was killed. We're very proud of him. I'm sorry I was angry with you today. I wasn't really mad. Well, I'll forgive you this time, but only because it's your birthday. You know, senor, tonight you're missing a very good dance. Everybody's having a wonderful time. They're dancing, they're playing the guitars, they're doing everything, you know. But tomorrow, you're going to have a good jury. But I think they're going to get too many. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. acquainted with the virtue of personal discipline and your habits and manners. It is a prerequisite in any court of law. I intend to see that this rule is adhered to. Mr. Carnes, it is your privilege to plead your own case if you so wish. And since no territorial prosecutor has been assigned, I hereby appoint Marshal Strahd to act as such. Yes, Your Honor. Well, in that case, I'll call Sheriff James Ellison to the stand. Mr. Stroud, you may use my Bible for the oath. Thank you, sir. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, or how to die? Yes, sir, I do.
Just didn't tell it all, that's all. Very well. You may step down, Mr. Ellison. Are there any more witnesses you wish to call, Mr. Prosecutor? Do I have to if Carnes don't take the stand? There's no compulsion. Can I if he does? You may. Then I'll just play what I've got. You mean you wish to yield to the defense? Yes, sir. I guess that's what I mean. There are two courses open to you, Mr. Carnes. You may decline to take the stand, which will force me to give the case to the jury with only the testimony of the Mr. Ellison. Or you may testify on your own behalf. In such case, you are, of course, subject to cross-examination by the prosecutor. I'll talk. Stand up! There's some things here that ain't been said yet. Swear him in, Marshal. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? That's right, Marshal. You may first give your name and age to the clerk, and then your testimony. Well, my name's Hatfield Carnes, and I'm 22 years old, I guess. Now, about this Mex Coroga? I have warned you about your language. I'm a Yankee, and I would deeply resent being referred to as a Yank in a court of law. There are Mexicans on the jury, and present as spectators. I can only assume that the term Mex is equally distasteful to them. You will not use it again. Well, you see, this Kuroga was drinking with us in the cantina. And I told him to shut up a couple times. That he didn't belong with us anyhow. Well, he got a little uppity. So I figure, I got a fight on my hands. So I tell him, uh, Step out into the road. Likes a little better. What are you going to do, Hat? Knuckle and elbow him a little? Uh, <laughs> there's any more rowdyism, I will hear this case without spectators. Go on, Mr. Combs. Well, we had it out right there. Kuroga goes for his gun. I beat him the draw. And that's it. 
Now, maybe I didn't need those other two shots. But I couldn't take no chances. Is that all, Mr. Combs? Yeah, that's all. It's like I've been saying all along. <clears throat> I had to shoot him. The witness is open to cross-examination, Mr. Prosecutor. When you followed Kiroga out of the cantina, did you say anything to him? Anything that might have pushed him into going for his gun? I don't remember. Did you say anything inside of the cantina that could have insulted Kiroga? Well, now, I told him to shut up a couple times, but, uh, you know, I don't go around insulting people. Even Mexicans? I don't even go around insulting them. But you do push them around a little. Well, maybe me and the boys get to feel a little playful. Is it true that you killed four men? Five. That's counting Kuroga. Were the four men you killed before Kiroga as fast with a gun as they say you are? Well, they're dead, ain't they? Did you deliberately? Set them up to reach for the gun so you could shoot them down. They don't make no never mind. I shot them in self-defense. Did you kill Francisco Quiroga? Well, sure I killed him. What do you think I'm doing here? <laughs> That's so. You may step down. I'll call Clarence Tolliver to the stand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Be seated. On last April 5th, did you see Francisco Quiroga killed? Yes, sir, I did. How did it happen? Well, Kiroga ducked out of the cantina, scared. You could see he was scared. Carnes followed him down the steps until he stopped. I thought Kiroga was going to run. You could see he was plenty scared. Oh, you talk big, Max. Let's see you got guts enough to draw on a white man. Obligas. It was cold-blooded murder. I guess that's all, Your Honor. You mean the prosecution rests? Yes, sir. Mr. Tolliver is now open to cross-examination, Mr. Cummings. You may step down, Mr. Tolliver. Mr. Carnes, do you wish to submit further testimony? I've told everything I want to say. Stand up! I've told everything I want to say! Mr. Prosecutor, do you wish to address the jury? Yes, sir. I'd like to bear down on one point. You all heard Sheriff Ellison, and you heard Carnes. But the man who ought to shape your verdict is Clarence Tolliver. He told you what Carnes said to Kiroga. And if there's a man on this jury who wouldn't draw after that kind of talk, he, well, he isn't much of a man. That winds me up, gentlemen. The law stipulates that the defendant has the right of final summation before the jury. Do you care to address them, Mr. Carnes? Nope. 
I shot in self-defense, that's all I gotta say. It is customary to recess between the summations of counsel and the charging of the jury. However, we have seen so many irregularities in this trial that I shall, in expediency's name, add one more. I give you your instructions now. Murder is the unlawful killing of a person with malice aforethought. You must remember that phrase well, malice aforethought. For those words should govern your decision. If Hatfield Carnes, knowing he was more adept with a firearm than Francisco Quiroga, goaded Quiroga into a hostile gesture, thus precipitating Quiroga's death, then Carnes is guilty of murder. Hatfield Carnes has told you that he killed Francisco Quiroga in self-defense. Did he? Were the three bullets he fired into Caroga's body necessary to save his own life? If you find that they were, then you must set him free to walk again among you. If you find that they were not necessary, then you must find him guilty of murder. I send you now to your deliberations. With these words of Deuteronomy, be strong and of a good courage. Mr. Ellison, you will conduct the jury to the jury room. As far as we're concerned, they got nothing to decide. What are you trying to do? Mr. Ellison, I want those men jailed for contempt. I only have one cell in the jail. And that's a pretty important prisoner. Very well. You will see that the jury is guarded at all times. I will brook no interference with the jury. Nobody will leave this room until the jury has retired and the accused has been remanded to jail. Let's go the jury to the jury room. my Spanish straight someday. Seems like a lot of your riders are in town today. They asked permission to come in to San Bartolo and watch your American justice at work. That is why we are here. It will be very interesting to find out what an American court will do with an American killer. When will the trial begin? 
You missed the first part of it. The jury went out a few minutes ago, and Judge Isham is in his chambers. I suppose he will have to remain there until this matter is decided. I am not familiar with your American ways. I guess that's it. He's probably yelling for his lunch. Yelling, Jim? Is this the proper respect for a judge? Oh, he can yell when he wants to. Then we must not provoke him. I have brought some things for his lunch. Oh, that's great. Now I won't have to dig up a meal for him. Did you cook it, Ellie? I do not cook. For this, we have cocinera. You'd better learn. Step down, Ellie. I'll introduce you and your father to the judge. No, I'm not lunching with them. I will go to visit with my cousin, Beatriz Estudillo. Tell Doña Beatriz to expect us for dinner. Si, papa. Now, Senor Sherry, you may introduce me to your judge. Manuel. Mrs. Espuelas. the jury? Talk. Mucho, mucho talk. What are they saying? <laughs> I do not know, Senor Jim. What's the matter with your ears? The door is too thick and they do not talk loud. This way down, Roberto. Senor Jim, Santiago, I'm hungry. You stay right there. Sir, this is Don Roberto de la Madrid, the patron of our district. He wishes to be presented to you. Don Roberto, Judge Isham. Don Roberto, my pleasure, sir. I bid you welcome to San Bartolo. How may I serve you? Your presence here is service enough. I'm grateful. You do me great honor. I'm only sorry I can't offer you any better hospitality. If you will permit me, I have brought my own hospitality. Jim, will you please send in my muscles? Yes, sir. And stop that infernal disturbance out there. Yes, sir so we can talk in peace. Don Roberto, this is my entire magisterial retinue, United States Marshal Stroud. How are you doing, sir? Don Roberto wants the Mozos inside. Come on, Vincio. Follow me, Chachos. Give him the comida, Don Roberto. Stop this racket and take your boys back inside. What's the matter, Sheriff? Don't you like mariachi music? Not out here. You're disturbing the jury. Back inside, Mateo. Stay where you are, Mateo. You've been paid to do what I want. Now, if you want to boss some mariachis around, why don't you go out and hire your own? I hired these. Do as I say, Mateo. Take your boys back inside. Vamos, muchachos. This is the second time today you've crowded us, Sheriff. I want that ball stopped. If we stop that fight now, Your Honor, that kid never will forgive us. Your marshal is a wise man, Senor Juez. Oh, that's the right rule. Get up! Get up! Come on, 
I figured you'd use that. You figure a lot of things wrong, Lee. <laughs> I thought you knew how to fight. <laughs> the way you argue. Good logic. The judge wants to see you. Trouble? Game's on. I'll look in on Carnes for you. Thanks. Oh, and tell him I'll feed him directly. Take care of it myself. Any word yet? No, senor Jim. Nothing. Madre de Dios! What happened to the front of your head? Had a thump of skull. This magic. Sheer magic. It is a small gesture. Please do not think that we are all barbarians because we live on the frontier. It's quite the most handsome gesture ever made on my behalf. Oh, Ellison? Yes, sir. I watched your disgraceful behavior with that ruffian in the street. Well, I was stopping that infernal disturbance for you, sir. And who guards your prisoner while you engage in street brawls? That won't go anywhere. I will no longer be a party to this travesty of proper procedure. I want the prisoner guarded at all times. Uh, I can't do that, sir. Why can't you? No more deputies. Then get another one. Do I have the authority to appoint one? You do when I order you to. Appoint a deputy to guard the prisoner. Yes, sir. Why are you saluting me? I'm not a Marine officer. No, sir, but you sound like one. to Rancho Santa Domingo Vaqueros. Yeah, and there are riders from two or three other ranches here, too. They're not all Don Roberto's men. Well, I wish they were. Don Roberto can handle his men. Can he? There's an awful lot of murder talk about Caroga. Well, I wish that jury would make up his mind. Oh, any words, Sheriff? Nothing yet, Charlie. That means they ain't just gonna laugh it off. No matter what the jury decides, we're in for trouble. If they convict Hap, the no goods next door will try to take him away. You saw how they were in court. I was almost afraid to testify. And if they turn him loose, those vaqueros will try to hang him. You ain't got no authority to make me stop sending lick at you. I'm only asking it for the rest of the day. I just want to prevent trouble. After all, I am the sheriff here. Oh, are you now? And uh, who says so? You haven't got any more authority than I have. You'd like to run things here in San Bart now that us Americans have come. Be the big saloon keeper, boss, like back home. I'm not saying it. You are. And I'll say another thing. You'd set fire to your mother if you could get a good price for the ashes. I might get best for that. Go ahead, Patty. I'd like to see that. <laughs> 